All right. Hello, everybody. 
I am Jeff Stevens, and this is the first episode of Jeff Talks RPGs. I'll probably do this monthly. Um, uh, J- Jenny Loveday has offered to host this stream for me, and I'm just going to use this as an outlet to talk to people in the RPG industry. Uh, tonight, we're talking to consumers of RPG products. I have with me John Lemich, Chad Gallagher, and Jonathan Pettit. Um, and let me go ahead and have John Lemich introduce himself. Hi. I'm John Lemich uh, at Run a Game on Twitter. I've got a little uh, blog at runagame.net. I play and run tons of RPGs. Right now, I'm playing Blades in the Dark, running Blades in the Dark, uh, running Dungeons and Dragons out of the abyss, and playing Masks, a new generation, which is my favorite RPG. I've not heard of that one. It's amazing. So I'll have to check it out. And we have Chad Gallagher with us. Hello. Uh, I'm Chad Gallagher. I'm on Twitter at RealCMG. Um, I play games, uh, some of which is now available on the internet at the Superior Adventurers Guild um, and run games and purchase games, which got me here today. And John, you also uh, do Adventures from Home there, right? With In Wisconsin, you take people on um, little treks. Me, Chad. I'm in Minnesota. Chad, I'm sorry, Chad. That's okay. Minnesota. Uh, yes. Um, uh, well, I guess up until our current situation, I uh, had been a uh, adventure tour guide uh, and uh, actually ran the uh, axe throwing uh, part of a local brewery in town, um, take people kayaking, mountain biking, that kind of stuff. Axe throwing sounds fun. I've seen also, it, but we'll I've not to... done it yet, so I hope to do that sometime. And then we have John Pettit with us. John, can you tell us about yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is John Pettit. I'm in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. been playing uh, RPGs, primarily D&D, for over 40 years. Started in the late 70s. Played a lot of different ones. I've uh, currently run in three games with, uh, online with Discord and Fantasy Grounds. Uh, but I'm also a big consumer, a lot of Kickstarters. I have a, probably have a Kickstarter addiction along with DMs Guild and Drive Through RPG. Just love them. Uh, love to read them. Been playing a lot of games for a long time. Yeah, I just recently had my, my Kickstarter finished up, and uh, I noticed that I was trolling Kickstarter a lot more and found a lot more things to spend money on. And I've got a bunch of things in the pocket that are going to be out in about six months or so that I'm pretty excited to get. Um, so yeah, I can definitely see where that's an addiction. Uh, but everybody here is purchased from the DMs Guild, which is great. Um, they've purchased from other third-party publishers or uh, um, sites, and that's great too. And we just want to—I I had this—I've had this idea for a while to speak with consumers because I and I know other D and D creators or RPG creators would like to make a full-time job at this. It's a difficult task to do. Um, there's a lot of uh, variables to consider. One of them being U.S. health insurance. Um, and trying to fund that on your own but uh you know as a producer as a creator i think i know what consumers want um in a in an rpg product and i want to actually talk to the consumers themselves to see what what is it that you're looking for what makes you click buy or what makes you read more about the product and so that's what i'm hoping to you know get a little information from you three uh, as to, and maybe help some other people who, who want to do this too. Um, so let's start off with uh, just, I'll just go with one, one, the, one of the things I think is most important is the cover image on the product. Is that like, don't judge a book by its cover. Do you care about what the cover looks like or is the cover a big piece for you? I think for me, it kind of depends, you know, um, speaking about like buying things on dms guild or even drive through rpg um you know if it's if it's like a community like a community type creator product i'm probably less concerned about having really dope cover art um but if it's like a legit like third party company you know or or a community person who's got a little bit bigger britches and uh, it hopefully it's really cool and sucks me in. <laughs> yeah, just just to hit on that real quick, being the small time creator that a lot of people are in the Dungeon Master Guild, Drive Through RPG, and these other systems, unless you're doing a big time Kickstarter and you get the funding, it's really hard to pay for your art. Um, art is expensive. Uh, basically, almost everything 
other than the time you're spending writing is expensive. You know, if you're the writer, if you've got to go out and you've got to pay for editing, um, if you can do your own layout, great. If you can't, you've got to pay for that. Um, cartography. So a lot of these things add up, <coughs> excuse me. And um, it's really hard to make that money back, especially as a first time creator. So a lot of people use stock art or the, the free images that they can find on the Dungeon Master's Guild. And so, yeah, knowing that um, for you, Chad, knowing that uh, the cover isn't that it, that important is great, unless it is coming from one of the larger companies. What about John or John P? I it... Go ahead, John. Sure. I was going to say, I, I judge a book by its cover in that I, I, my expectations for what's inside of it come from the cover, not the quality of what's inside of it, but the content itself. If you have a epic fighter battling a giant on the cover, then I'm just going to assume it's a epic battling book, you know? I, so choosing the art is more important than how much you paid for it. If you bought stock art that perfectly encapsulates what's in the book, then you're going to communicate to me really quickly what that product is about so that I know whether it's for me or not. Now, if you want to lure me to buy something that's not for me, that's a different conversation. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think the cover art is good for that little thumbnail to get you pulled in, but I, I think Chad already said it too. If I get a, a note from somebody that uh, I've already bought a lot of products from, or it's a big company I'm familiar with, or somebody I've bought from in the past, it probably has more of a pull in there. So the art is not as important as that. It probably goes back in that case when I go to pull it up, look at the description. What does the description say? Mm -hmm. Give me the details. That's good. That's good to know. A lot of times I work a lot off of images myself when I write. And so I'll, a lot of times I will go out and commission the cover first before I even finish the book because I use that as inspiration when I write. Um, but, you can, but, but I've got, yeah, it is. In, in several cases, it hasn't paid off, but um, <laughs> in other cases, it has. But uh, I've also put together products based just on stock art and sent uh, some of my big collaboration products. I would send stock images to individuals and say, hey, write me up a, a NPC background for this for using this image as inspiration and just let them go with it. And, you know, just that just using stock art is inspirational in itself. But you can't always find stock art that's going to fit every adventure or every every cover and so that's why a lot of things have to be commissioned or that, and I, I'm able to do that and so that's why I do that but I'm sure several many people will love to hear that the you want the um, basically you want to see the cover portray something that is in the book itself you know something that's gonna um, uh reflect what you're buying basically you know something relevant yes relevant yeah one of the like maybe i'm jumping ahead but like for me one of the biggest things i look for in a in a piece whether it's a product i should say is the context um and if that cover art can convey the context you know even if it's like you know, like my five-year-old self drew it, if it conveys that context very well, like that's great. Like, I think like like John L said, like if, you know, if it's the giant fighting the, or the guy fighting the giant, like, yes, if that's the context, yes. Yeah, uh, speaking of you know, when you said uh, your five-year-old self drew it, there's actually a, um, a great piece on the, um, DM skill that is an ogre and his cake that is not, I don't think, commissioned stock art or commissioned art, um, but it is a hand drawn ogre um, by, uh, it's by uh, Chris Walls and, and Emmett Byrne. And um, yeah, hand drawn ogre with a hand drawn crayon cake, you know, I mean, it's, it's a great image, but it conveys exactly what it's about. You know, it's a awesome. child based, it's, it's written for kids. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I think that really, that's a good cover. If you want to talk about stock art, check out Iron Sworn by Sean Tompkin. It's, it's made with stock art that he modified in Photoshop. And it's just an amazing book with continuity of theme throughout. And it, but it's, you know, it, it feels real. Yeah. Yeah, and having just done my first Kickstarter and investing in the art in that, you know, I know how much 
some of these main major books can cost like cobalt press books and and the the wizards of the coast books um those things are expensive to produce and Mm -hmm. knowing that that stock art is just as good is great so what about let's let's talk about the um the writing of the book um there's a big push you know for people to use the the 5e style guide the dnd watsi style guide so that um the sentences the everything matches what you would normally read in the the official books is that a big factor for you or can people take liberty in how they do things for me for me the familiarity helps a lot but it's not required i mean especially i mean 5e stuff there is so many variations the way that people write those but but if you're familiar with an rpg and a game system it makes it easier for me to follow along and keep track of what's going on it probably makes it less time for game prep and that helps a lot yeah yeah there's there are people who are trying to make some changes to the way it you know just instead of saying dc 15 strength athletics they're just going to say a dc 15 athletics check uh, maybe take the strength out or um write it in different in a different phrasing that type of thing um and also um you know how about typos grammar that type of thing is that a big issue for you knowing that uh, these are um individual little creators or does it matter to you my day job is writing, so I'm going to notice all the typos, yeah. but yeah. I also don't care so much. I mean, this is a hobby. Even the, even the biggest publishers, are, it's, it's a hobby, a hobby industry, really. A hobby industry is a hard, one of those military intelligence type oxymorons, but <laughs> right. uh, it's a cottage industry in a lot of ways. So I, I forgive a lot of typos if the heart is there. As for the... Um, uh, as for the format and the layout, I mostly don't play and run D&D, you know, so I'm open to whatever you've got, as long as it's clean and usable layout with uh, a style that evokes the, the subject matter, uh, I'm happy with it. Yeah, a lot of people are, cha- are trying to change out the the way they do layout too, you know, they're experimenting with different, different layout systems uh, when they, when they're published in the DMs Guild, that's where I mostly see stuff. Um, and, and, you know, as a creator myself, I've been uh, taught to write a certain way or told to write a certain way. And, um, you know, it doesn't always fit. I don't think sometimes you can, you can make things a little easier to understand. I think if you change the writing style of it, mm-hmm. Um and then, yeah, like you said, uh, your your day job is is you notice typos, you not, you notice errors. Having done this for four years, I notice errors too. You know, it's like it just happens. I, I could put something that's been out edited twice by two different people and still have a typo or, or a grammar error in it because you know it it it's, it just happens. Mm-hmm. So knowing that that's not as important is great to know too because you always wonder. You know how how um, how are my errors going to be consumed by the consumer? You know, are they going to? Am I going to come back and get a, a, a review saying, "Oh, well, he he misspelled lying when it should have been laying," or you know, just that type of thing? Um, Never it's read scary. the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, it's tough. It took me a while when I first started, and I would get some of these comments. I was like, "What are you talking about?" You know, and I would get defensive but now it's like you know everybody's got their own opinion um some people love things some people don't and that just that comes across in their comments and their reviews that they write Mm -hmm. um you just kind of have to learn to learn from them um and take everything as a learning experience and not as a a mark on your um a a bad report card or something like that you know right Maybe I'm a bad reviewer, but I don't leave one star reviews if I didn't like something. I'll leave a glowing review if I loved it, but I just don't review it at all if I didn't like it. And that that makes sense because not every adventure, not every supplement is going to feel the same way to every consumer. You know, mm-hmm. um, some people may love something that's out there and somebody else may pick it up and it doesn't fit for them. And there's no reason to give it a one star review just because it doesn't fit with your style or that type of, you know, I, I I mean, I could see if it's, I I can see where there may be times where you may want to leave a one-star review just because of certain issues or um, 
I don't want to bring politics into this, but you know, um, discontinuity, story discontinuity, yes. or you find errors. Unlike John, I do have a tendency when I see errors in it, grammatical, I'm not real happy about them because I'm wondering what else was left out. And so that they tend to stand out and I'm not, I don't do a reading for a living. I'm an engineer by trade. So, <clears throat> but it still irritates me because of what could be there. But when I see that, I do usually just send the author a note to himself, not publicly. And, and like he said, I usually won't give a, a review unless it's a positive or a great, a, a great review. Cause that's no point in it. I may send a note to him to explain my issue with it, but I won't put it on the post it publicly. And that's a fantastic thing to do. We appreciate that. Um, you get those comments or reviews that you can't erase because, you know, somebody has, well, you wrote, you wrote this and this and this. And then if you go and fix it, it's still out there. Um, you know, they didn't make the change. You can certainly put a reply in there, but I'm not sure exactly how many people are going to actually see the reply and say that you fixed it. But no, uh, receiving something like um, uh, a note from the reader is fantastic. Um, uh, just to say, hey, I read this and I'm missing this. Could you do this for me? Or, or I think it would be cleaner this way or you misspelled this. Great. Love it. Thank you for reading my product. Thank you for getting in touch with me. You're making me a better person, a better writer. And it shows that there's a consumer out there that cares enough to email me and tell me this stuff. So we've talked about the cover. How about the title of the product? Uh, I've I've backed and purchased some things with ridiculous and useless sounding titles that were amazing, like Trilemma Adventures. It was an amazing product. Um, I think it won any awards. Uh, it really? was from last year. It was amazing. It's a it's a supplement full of adventure hooks for D and D, Dungeon World, fantasy games in general, and it's just called Trilemma Adventures, which doesn't tell you anything. They're not even really adventures. They're like um, micro adventures or story hook things that uh -huh. put your players up for for messing with a really complex exciting situations and the title is sorry guys i'm i said i didn't give bad reviews but the title is not super good the, the product is amazing it deserves all the accolades it's getting yeah that's and, and it's, it sounds like it did really what was it a kickstarter or is it just something that's been was it, it was it? a kickstarter and it was it was a it was a it's a great product i highly re recommend it um it's actually a lot like the thing you just kickstarted I think a bunch of now, story seeds. The um, did it do well in Kickstarter? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think part of that has to do with the art, and mm -hmm. part of that had to do with just the uh, amazing word of mouth that went out around it, explaining what it was. That is what I've found to be the best advertisement that there is: is word of mouth. Uh, I could tweet twenty times in a day, which I've done, I think, <laughs> and uh, not get as many. Um, backers or or, or uh, retweets that I could if someone else were to go out so just a consumer and say hey this is a great product you should check this out you know because I'm you know, people know I'm, I'm trying to push my product it's when other people that can say you know of, of any product that this is a great product this is so cool you, you got to check this out um what about you Chad title yeah you know I I like good titles. Um, sometimes like a good like subtitle or subheading can save a meh title. But yeah, I, I guess I, I'm just going to keep going back to context. If, if, that, mm -hmm. if that title hits the context, if it makes sense, especially with the cover image, you know, if that all kind of works together, that definitely helps. And it also helps, like, especially on something like the DMs Guild, you know, where I might be, I might be looking for a fighter subclass or um, uh, things to find in an adventurer's pack or just all these little things that we might find that are usable. Um, being able to have something like that in the title really helps be able to find things, especially on the internet um, and helps key, key me into what, a, what it is this is and what it is I hope it is. One of the, one of my, I wouldn't say my first, but my, my, my fourth product I think I published was an adventure called A Trail of Ground Nuts. Um, and I had reached out to Ed Greenwood and asked him, are there peanuts in the Forgotten Realms? He goes, yes, they're called ground nuts. <laughs> and so I titled it A Trail of Ground Nuts because throughout the adventure, you are following a trail of ground nuts that's left by, you know, um, 
the people who you're you're follow you're trying to find. <clears throat> it didn't go over well, and it sat there and it didn't sell well. So I changed the title to Blood on the Trail, which is a little more you know um, engaging, I think. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it's now one of my better selling adventures after four years. You know, it still sells a few here and there, but um, mm. it's. So I've learned that title is important. And sometimes Mm -hmm. when you think a title is good, it isn't. There's really really (laughs) no way to know that until you hit the publish button and see what people do and and see if it's uh, accepted by other people. Um, You know, then you've got the whole, you can make that up with the cover art possibly. You know, if the covers aren't striking and, you know, like John Lemich had said about that, the Kickstarter that, you know, horrible title, but great art, um, you know, trying to draw people in a different way. So put, getting the two together is like, I think the um, part of the magic puzzle is the great title, the great art or the, the great cover. Um, and then you've got the subject matter. Uh, so let me, let me ask John, John, what do you, John Lemich first, uh, John, what are you looking for when you're buying an RPG product? Are you buying adventures, um, player options, magic items? That's what do you, what do you buy mostly? I'm usually looking for content I can use in my existing games. Um, if I'm looking for third party supplemental content as, as opposed to a whole new game. So I'm looking for like a, a map to go with a, an adventure I'm adding in or a chapter I'm sticking in, or I'm looking for, um, you know, a, a set of encounters. I want things to be incomplete because if it's too complete, everything's all tied to each other and I can't pull a piece out. You know, if you're going to publish a module that I can use, I want it to be open-ended and have a lot of blanks in it that I can fill in or just ignore so I can pull the map and the map isn't too tied to the setting, which is tied to the story, which is very unique. Or I can pull the encounters, which I can then just reskin. Um, I mean, there's something to be said for st- something that's singular and, and flavorful and unique and all wrapped into one thing. But that's if I'm looking for content to start. I'm almost never looking for content to start. I'm mm-hmm. looking for content to supplement my existing games. So I think that people, there's a lot of people out there who are looking for something to be a complete package, but that's not me. Mm-hmm. John Pettit, what about you? So, so I look for, similar to that, I look for adventures and campaigns and campaigns on Kickstarter went crazy this summer. I think I, I don't know, 10 or 12 of those, but, but are an adventure or something to fill in the gaps. Like, like John mentioned, I want to be able to pull it out and put it in wherever. I'm also looking for supplemental things like um, <clears throat> uh, Encounter in the Savage Jungles. That's one of your products that I used when I'm running guys through uh, Tome of Annihilation. I, I don't want to sit there and figure out all the encounters. I want some of that stuff pre-done so I can kind of fit them in as I go. Um, things that also uh, make me a better DM. There's a, been a couple of things on how to be, you know, um, Sly Flourish, Mm-hmm. Um, Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. Uh, there's been Driss Durden's Guide to Combat, books like that that help me um, become better because that's something I've been working on this summer since I've been stuck at home and running games online. You don't have the full expressions and gestures and everything because we're not using video. Right. So those right. are the three categories, either adventures, filling in the blanks, or something that helps better my game. You know, in response to both both you, John and, and John, um, regarding the uh, when you were talking about filling in the game or uh, finding a piece uh, and and making it your own, one of the hardest things that I found as a DM. Now, I had, I hadn't DM'd until 2017. I'd been playing, you know, in the 80s through the 90s, and then uh, started up again in 20, uh, 2014, and didn't really start DMing until 2017 or 20, 2015. I apologize. And so it was really hard for me to learn how to actually DM a written adventure because I wanted to go straight the way it was written, you know, and uh, that was really difficult. And um, it's taken me time to learn how to kind of just use that as a template and let my players do whatever they want. Um, Make it up. Yeah, exactly. Make it up Uh, and just, you know, roll, roll with the punches as it would be. Um, And that makes, yeah, that makes a great game, you know, rather than following. And I, I, 
when I was first publishing and getting reviews and people would put comments on their reviews on my public, on my products and saying, well, we did this and this, and this, and this, and this. And I'm like, well, that's not how the adventure is written. You know, that, that was my first response to myself or, or to the comment in my head. And, but now I know, you know, that's, I want people to just use it as a template, make the adventure their own, you know, because it's, there's no way any adventure is going to be run the same way twice just there's too many variables within the game itself um so just uh yeah exactly having that piece to run as a template and and just um use the adventure use the maps use the creatures the magic items and just the, the idea and make it your own is a great way um to use the supplements that are on the on the dms guild or drive through rpg or wherever yeah a great template for that is the dracula dossier for Knights Black Agents, it wasn't written as a module that you play from like chronological order from start to finish. It's a, it's a 350 page or so kit of resources to build a Knights Black Agents campaign where your super spy is going up against Dracula. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got locations and possible endings and possible paths and possible NPCs. And all of them are, are painted in like, if this is an ally, if this is an enemy, if this is a useful contact, like all of that for each one. It's it's a completely different way to do a module, and it it also was a big blow up at really successful Kickstarter. So very popular product. So along those lines, let's say an adventure came out that was almost just like a story, okay? And it didn't list skill checks or saving throws, but you had enough information to where you could run it yourself. You knew what the NPC could do. You knew, you know, the level of your characters, you know, what a hard or medium um, skill check would be. Is that something that would be interesting to you just to have more, it, it would be more condensed adventure basically without the written skill checks and that type of thing. Or do you like seeing the skill checks and the saving throws in there? Yes. And yes, <laughs> I like, um, I'm a, uh, a Patreon supporter of uh, Runehammer games. And I guess maybe a year, oh boy, like a year ago, he came out with like a system neutral kind of setting slash game concept that was essentially uh, Red Dawn in space. And it's fantastic. And it's it gives you numbers, but contextually, mechanically, they don't mean anything. They're just like this is a slider of, of like how powerful this may or may not be whatever setting that you, or whatever system that you use. And I, it's, it's fantastic. He does a really good job, but also I, uh, I think that concept is of having uh, something that you can use and that gives you those points and that context um, without necessarily having the, you know, the mechanical weight behind it. Because, you know, like, like John says, it's something that I can put into what I'm doing um, is great. It's probably not for everybody. I can guarantee it's not for everybody. But True. Yeah, yeah, I think it's I think it's uh, I, I think I feel like there's definitely a place for something like that. I think there's sure. a place in every adventure for a DM to use their own skills. Um, I may I may write a DC 15 strength athletics check, but your um, your players may come up with a whole new idea or uh, something that could never ever be thought of by anybody else on how to cross an acid lake. You know, <laughs> you just sometimes they just come up with the wildest ideas, and What's you have to. Story? Oh yeah, I agree. You have to roll with that. You have to let them succeed sometimes, you know. Um, sometimes my character my players will say, I want to do this. I'm like, it happens. Uh, make your attack because they just leaped over this kitchen table, uh, dodged the flaming um candelabra that was on top of it, and just it just sounds so much fun that yeah, it happened. You know, there's no role for that one. Mm -hmm. Um and and so I think there's a certain level of if, if you're going to include skill checks and saving throws, I think there's a certain level of what you want to put in the adventure and what you don't want to put in the adventure, because the DM I think should have some leeway in how they're going to handle the situation. <laughs> hey, 
Hey. Yeah, so what is the first thing that catches your eye when you're browsing on the DMs Guild or elsewhere? I, I think we've mentioned it before. You know, that thumbnail, if it's applicable, whoever wrote it, maybe the, the author of the of the story, and again, the title. We've already mentioned those three things. Yeah. Uh, if there's something that pulls you in, want, makes me want to click on it and read in the more detail. See, I always thought color on, 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 the, on the thumbnail. I like red. I like action scenes. Um, uh, and, and yeah, a lot of times it does need to um, tie into what the product is. I'm, one of my favorite covers that I've had done is by Peter Penn of uh, Encounters in the Savage Seas. I don't know if you've ever seen that one. It's the giant dragon turtle with the village on the back fighting so a wizard. So good. He did such a great job with that piece that I'm, you know, I, it's, just, it's just when I think of my art or my covers that's the one I, I go to a lot and i've got some great art on all on on many of my products but i mean peter just knocked it out of the part with that one well you know what's interesting about the, the the thumbnails in dm's guild is that the more rich and complex the cover the harder it is to see what's going on yep. in it. so yep. the really simple like mostly white space with an iconic image in the middle kind of covers they catch my eye quicker because I'm just not good at seeing the detail in those little thumbnails. No, then, I agree. I agree with you. The other thing that catches my eye, I'm afraid, is when it says minus 75% off. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm hey. a sucker. I'm a total sucker. <laughs> hey, you're a consumer. I understand. Obviously, word of mouth first. So I'm going to go and look at something if someone tells me to look at it. But you said what catches your eye, and it's it's those two things. Wish oh, list. Perfect. Right? Wait for it to be on sale. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm, if you haven't wish list yet, uh, you might want to start doing stuff because the Thanksgiving sale is coming up, I think. Oh. Christmas. Yeah, this is a good sale time, um, November, December. Um, what was I going to ask? Um, we've uh, layout, um, you know, we've already discussed that where it doesn't have to match everything. You, you don't mind people taking uh, liberties with that. What about internal art? Before, that, we get to, before we get to internal art, can we talk about the description of the product? Please you know, do. There's so many times when I pull a product up and it doesn't even refer to the game system. It doesn't tell you what level or what tier or um, about how long it takes to run this or basic information about it. Give me that information. If it's a bunch of maps, list the maps out what it, what's there. I don't, I'm not going to buy something sight unseen if I don't know what's in the product. And the preview. Give me a yeah. good preview. Uh, preview is key for sure. <laughs> Does it have to be a full preview or can you just have a sample preview? Sample's fine. Yeah. A, a lot of, of one, two pages. A lot of creators have gone to full page or full previews um, because they think that's going to help their sales, which I could see that. I mean, uh, some are worried about piracy. Um, you know, people just download the pages or snip them or whatever, but um, you're going to have piracy anywhere that's we, we can't stop that um we can only hope that more people buy our products than those who pirate it um and there are some large pirate sites i'm not gonna give out any website addresses or anything like that but you know people are definitely concerned about it and i was concerned about it when i found my, a folder of all my products on one pirating site um now i don't care you know it's gonna happen i can't stop it mm -hmm. um but yeah, the full size previews, it's good to know that you don't need a, a full preview, you know, just a few pages. I like to give about half the document or the half the adventure when I do mine so that you can see enough of the art and the, the, the maps too. Um, and I use a lot of black and white art myself. Um, the sketch, I like that sketchy feel, the black and white sketchy feel, but then I also use full color too. So it, it kind of just depends on the mood of the, um, the adventure itself, but is, is color art or black and white art or is art important for you? Uh, oh boy. Yeah. For me, I feel like internal art is almost more important than cover art cover art is great because it gives you that you know that initial grab but like internal arts what i'm going to be spending the most time on you know that's what's really going to sell like oh this encounter scene that you're describing in your text oh hopefully it's got a really sweet piece of, of internal art for it i don't know that 
color or black and white is necessarily as huge of a thing as long as it's well done i mean i love mm -hmm. like i still love the old school like a d and d o d and d you know mm -hmm. like so, like oh man some of it's not good but it's so great and I know. It's, but it's but it because of that yeah be, and because of that negative space because of it that you know bold black lines and then that white space it it, it really helps sell things um yeah i'm a fan of that too um you know i've, I've used a few uh, uh, artists that do that and then um it just seemed like more people wanted color and so i went into some color options too but there's there's just some products that i feel that the horror feel i think is good for the black and white images mm. um didn't and, didn't forbidden lands win an award for best uh best design product and it's all black and white sketch images that's a glorious heard of that product. product it's phenomenal well, it, yeah and sometimes all the color makes it really hard to see the draw especially if it's a map or something it's hard to see the details on it if it is all full color now what i use the internal art for is to show my players if it you know, if there's a setting, I want to show them what it looks like. You know, if there's a, a spooky room with a puzzle, I got to show them that picture. If there's an NPC, like this is what they look like. And, you know, when I'm running now in Roll20 exclusively because COVID, um, it's really easy just to, you know, snipping tool, take the picture and drop it in the Discord or in the Roll20. Um, so I, I think with digital products, you have that ability to like move it from the adventure and into your GM notes or print it out and show the players. With print products, you know, you can just open the book and show them, but it's really neat to have that that to show them. Yeah, I agree. And you can use stock art for that. Like you said, you sent stock art pictures to people to write NPCs. I mean, that's fine. You don't have to spend all the money on it, I guess, but I need that. It's good. So Here's another question that came in from uh, Alan Tucker. Does does the size of the art matter? So can it be a quarter page, half page, full page? I mean, what do you? Does it matter as far as? I I, I can see if you're if you're looking for like an environment or you want at least half a page probably in order to kind of set that mood or, or full page. Um, I usually my my NPCs or when I have uh, uh, character art, it's usually about a quarter page, just enough to give you the 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 image you know of, of who you're talking to or who you're working with um but so is that important to you in a print book it has to be big because i'm showing it across the table right but um digital if i'm doing if i'm running digital or if i can yeah. copy and paste it and print it out print out just the picture or whatever then it's less important that makes sense um, and then you had mentioned maps. Um, if they're if they're too colorful, it's hard to see the details. Do you prefer a colored map or a black and white map, or both? I like, I like both. Other, let other people talk because I have some thoughts. <laughs> I like, okay, I like both. I've spent um, a questionable amount of money on heroic maps in the last four months, five, whatever. You know, like. Every day I'm like, oh, hey, I got, I'm doing this thing. Let's look at heroic maps or, or whoever. Um, and they just, they have full color maps and those maps are, are just gorgeous, but they're big. They have bold, good outlines. Mm -hmm. You know, there's definitely a few companies that make maps that have less bold outlines. And that's, so that's kind of a thing. But then uh, black and white, you know, like Wizards got, some crap from some people online uh i think from the tomb of annihilation because they started using black and white maps again i thought that was fantastic i didn't understand but you know the internet right but yeah, it exactly. is but those maps like black and white maps are super cool suit still very usable and can be just as evocative as color maps yeah i, I find it easier to under yeah like you said there may be too much detail on a color map i do find it easier to to, to um decipher a black and white map uh same with the mad mage i think uh, they use the black and whites in mm -hmm. those as well mm -hmm. dyson logo I, logos i think took care of most of all those Gorgeous. now he's got if you're looking for maps I, i'm not sure if you know this he's got um map packs on drive through rpg that you can purchase and download and then also his website has a bunch of free maps that you can look mm -hmm. at to and use but uh, well that's um, this, this is what I want to communicate to the, the creators as a consumer. The black and white map 
as the GM map is the best map. If, mm -hmm. if I'm going to print it out and give it to the players or put it in Roll20, go ahead and dress it up with furniture and color, make it look photorealistic, whatever. But my GM map, I need to see the shape of the space. If you want to make me feel like I'm in the space, draw me a picture of it or commission the art. Don't mm -hmm. dress up the map. The GM map should just be simple. The, like you said, the Dyson Logos maps, those are amazing for that. That's a good point. That makes, yeah, that's great. And then the player handout. I would love a lot of these products to give me a player handout map, like the kind of thing that a cobalt would scrawl with chalk or a dying priest would draw in his own blood or, you know, or like an ancient, like an adventuring party that has gone before would sell you or, you know, that kind of thing. There was a recent Kickstarter, a cobalt press, I think, Scarlet Citadel. They have an option where you can buy the battle maps. All the dungeons, everything has a, a uh, complete full-size map, one-inch grid for gameplay. That I thought that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maps are, are pretty important, especially in, in this day and age when we're, most of us are playing online. Um, you know, to be able to throw that up on Roll Twenty or Fantasy Grounds or whatever you wherever you're playing uh, is pretty your last. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I ran a game uh, a couple weeks ago with Jenny and uh, some friends and. Um, we ran through um it was my first time using roll 20 so i was you know pretty scared about that you know trying to, they're, they're like select the layer and then do this and this and like I, I don't know what i'm doing but eventually by the end of the game i think i had a pretty good grasp on it but but yeah that that made it so much easier to actually play the game to have the map up on the the screen and be able to move some tokens around and get an idea of space um but yeah color maps versus versus black and white i've used both I do like color. I think it, it's an art level to the book. You know, it adds that 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 another piece of art to the book. But then I usually try and provide a black and white map also, so that you can easily print it out, or the DM can use it for whatever they want to use use it for. Um, what about the size of the product? Um, so, say you're looking for a short adventure, or or a longer book, um, compared to what's what you're looking for. Um, does that does that really matter? So, like, say you see uh, an adventure that's ten pages long for four ninety five, and you see another one that's twenty pages long for the same price, four dollars ninety five cents. Does that matter to you, or are you immediately going to say, well, ten four ninety five for the ten page adventure is too much compared to the twenty dollar one? But you know, or does the does the content matter more? To me, the content's going to matter more. Also, as I mentioned on the description, that 10-page adventure, is that a three-hour adventure? Is that five hours? The 20-page one may only be a two-hour adventure. It may have a lot of extra fluff in there that I, I may or may not need. So, right. yeah, but What are those 20 pages? What are those 10 extra pages, right? Are they, are they going to be worth it, or is it just you've put all the spells in that the monsters use? Right. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, the the size versus pricing of things on DMs Guild on Drive Through RPG is is much. I'm sure is as much of a conundrum to us consumers as it is to the you know creators. Mm -hmm. You know, just some things. You know, man, I tell you, some things I've paid like three dollars for, and it's like a hundred page plus book and it is worth it and some things i've uh, paid 10 to 15 dollars for and it's a little less and it's just i've just been like it's cool there's like one page of a thing in here that i'm gonna use and the rest of it is yeah. me yeah, yeah it's uh it's it's weird it's hard that's i've seen behind the curtain and i know you creators pay by the page for layout and you pay by the piece for art, and you pay by the page for indexing and by the page for editing. So I know that a longer title costs you more. So it should mm -hmm. cost me more. So I kind of get that. Um, but then if I'm definitely going to use a product, I'll pay, you know, $30 for a 20 page product. You know, if I'm definitely going to use it, there's almost no ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, if I might use it, maybe use it. If I'm just curious, mm -hmm. then I'm waiting for that 75% off sale. Yeah. But, uh, if I'm definitely going to use it, yeah, I, I, there's no price ceiling for me. 
if I'm sold and get excited about it, you know, like, man, there's some Kickstarters, like Animal Adventures. Like, yes, I want to play dogs and cats as D&D characters. Please take my money. I will pay you any amount of money for this. You yeah. know, and it, yes, it does happen that those are great products. Um, but yeah, there's some things, yeah, some things on like the DMs Guild or drive through where it's like, yes, I, I will pay. Oh, it's pay what you want. Here's more money, you know, than the average asking cost because this yeah. seems really good. I like that model because sometimes if it's, re- it, you know, sometimes it'll be like, ah, it's a little tight this month. I'm going to buy it for the $3. I'll uh-huh. read it. Oh, it's great. I'm going to go back in and give a little bit extra money, you know, five, 10 bucks, whatever, as long as I have it um, because it's something that's worth it. And I want creators to be able to keep doing it. And I want, I want more stuff. So you have to make more stuff. So I have to give you money. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it, no, that's and, it right there. As a as as a creator, as somebody who wants you to buy my stuff, it's difficult to price it above four dollars and ninety five cents, you know, because that's where a lot of the products were. But I've moved several of my products up to five ninety five or six dollars ninety five cents because I know what they cost me to produce, and if I'm going to produce similar products like that, I have to make more money. Um, and so it's it's refreshing to hear that if you if, if you're if you're bought into something you're going to pay whatever the list price is or you're going to wait for it to go say go on sale which hey i don't mind wait for it to go on sale i don't care as long as i get a sale um you know that you're interested in the content over the pricing and that's great to hear now i know we're just three people uh three we're talking to three consumers and this is going to vary all over the place but but it's great to hear three people i, I john do you have the same the same thoughts on this I, I do i do I do. Uh, another another thing that I have an option is we talked about VTTX assets, you know, so you can drop into Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds. Are those available separately? Um, I, I'm an old school guy. I like to print stuff out too, especially if I'm running an in-house game. Um, is there a low ink version of it? Mm-hmm. Or is that product available on Fantasy Grounds or Roll20? You know, mm-hmm. those are other options. Yeah, that, absolutely. Yeah. Especially yeah, now. I have a lot of my stuff converted to fantasy grounds just because I know there, there is, uh, there are people out there who enjoy playing it that way. And that's cool with me. That's just another way for people to enjoy my games. Um, like I said, I do, I do try to, um, uh, use the low, the low ink or the black and white maps also for people who want to print them out because I know not everybody has the, um, endless ink to, to print out the color maps. Um, so I try, I try and, um, facilitate that for the consumer and, and i know other people do too i'm not the first one to to say um you know we need to include the maps with the products i don't sell uh, i have one product that i sell the map separately with and that's the minds of cholt just because that was just a the way it was produced um but everything else i include my maps with uh, everything i i produce and i want people to be able to use everything like that they can I'm reading some comments here, Ham. Uh, one of the comments says, the frustrating thing for creators is that the Guild and drive through RPG weigh higher priced products better on the best sellers ribbons. So moving toward bigger, more expensive products. So yeah, so you're going to see, I think, this this change in pricing. Um, I, was, I was stuck at the $4.95 level because there's that best um, selling titles under $5 ribbon. Mm-hmm. And I recently put out a poll on Twitter asking, you know, was that important to people? Did people look at the, that ribbon? And the majority said no. Um, some were like, what ribbon? And, you know, I, I think you, you w- when you go to the, the DMs Guild, do you look at those ribbons or do you start searching or filter through like horror or whatever you're looking for? Start searching. I look at the ribbons. Maybe I'm do not you? like the people in your poll. Yeah. No, 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 that's cool. Browsing. If I'm just browsing, I'm looking at the stuff on sale. Because if I'm going to make an impulse buy, I might as well make an impulse buy under five dollars or seventy five percent off or whatever. Yeah. But, but like, if you need a horror adventure, um, oh, do you I'm... go and filter horror, or uh, if you're looking for a certain kind of map, you know, I suppose you're going to you're going to filter out for maps. Yeah, I mean, if it's like I said before, if I'm going for a thing that I need and I'm going to use. I don't care what price it is. I'm going to search until I find the perfect thing and then I'll pay them whatever they ask for it. That's fantastic to hear. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of, 
a lot of people are going to appreciate hearing that. Um, I, I know I do. Um, well, so I'm going to mark up all my I'm marking up all my titles in 995 now. And well, well, usually <laughs> you're you're getting ready for a game. But, oh my gosh, I got a gap here. I need to fill in that gap. And you go search, and like John said, just hit the button. Bye. Yeah. It's it's. But here's the question for you as a creator: Do you get more money and more sales from those? impulse buys that when you go 75% off or sell it for $4.99, or do you get more money from the people who are looking for a specific thing and will pay you any amount for that thing? I don't know I, if you know the answer. It's difficult. Um, I, cause I have, I have products in both the ribbon uh, in the, in the best selling ribbon. And then I know when Halloween comes around, my horror adventure is still like crazy. Um, not as crazy as the haunt by Phil Beckwith. Um, that, Thing just beats me every year i'm trying to to you know i don't know how i have to have to knock him out of the out of the the, the ratings but i, I want to do it so i get on the top ratings and beat him out because i think the haunt's still out there on the most popular and like number six number number seven maybe i don't know um but yeah every year he just skyrockets and i'm like how many of you did you sell today bill and he comes back i'm like oh my god but uh um so so i think people are actually you know they'll bet they'll pay full price if they're looking for a horror adventure um at, at that time uh, if it's at halloween or they're, they're looking for something to add to curse of Strahd or something like that um but then we also do see sales during this you know we may see a big jump in sales during the sales and i don't know if that's because of promotion of the sale or um you know just people taking advantage of their wish lists um so yeah that's that's a metric i can't track and i wish i knew but because you know the the idea is to make money doing this i love doing it this is the kind of job that i want to do you know for the rest of my life and it's the the how do i get there to do it and you know increasing prices is one way to do it and and there's a big discussion in the industry about it um paying writers because I, I i work with a lot of other writers um and pay them to write for me, you know, and try to move to a livable wage to pay them for, for writing. And uh, that's difficult to do when you're publishing the Dungeon Masters Guild. Now I was able to pay a fairly good rate for those who wrote for me for my Kickstarter, because I knew I was going to go to the Kickstarter. I wasn't going to lose the 50% um, to the DMs Guild that we lose for, for publishing there. Um, but uh, yeah, trying to get to that level of, of um, income to to pay people to work for me, uh, and that's another reason I commission art and 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 pay editors and and commission maps, is because I'm trying to help others like me in this industry, and that's always been a goal of mine, um, is to you know push that money to other people as well as me, and trying and to let other people live their dream. It's it's valuable as. I ultimately as a person in anything, but I probably even specifically in this industry as well to know, to be able to be okay with what you're good at and, and, and being able to make use of people who are also okay with what they're good at. Like, I mean, I'm writing, I'm writing an adventure. Oh, I could do a map or I could, you know, get somebody who's really awesome at doing maps to do maps for me. And so that's a, that's a super huge valuable skill, man, for sure. Yeah. I can do a map, but I can't do a map. You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can give you that basic little, that little hash mark structure type thing, but I can't, I can't do the Dyson logos or the, right. the Jean Larbert or, um, uh, ch guy you know some of the people that i that i work with uh, just people it's like when the, you, elvin tower you know i mean when you get older you want to pay somebody to do the best job that you can do because you can't necessarily do it the best so pay right. that person yeah. yeah you're not young enough to make the mistakes anymore and learn from <laughs> them. you're when you're older you know i'm 49 and, and i'm like i don't want to try and fix my dishwasher because it could take me four hours and i i don't do anything I might as well pay somebody to come in here to fix my dishwasher okay. for me. And um, yeah, I, 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 it's like InDesign. I'd love to learn how to use InDesign. Every time I open it, it's like an alien spacecraft dashboard. Um, I don't understand it. So, mm -hmm. well, is there anything that, that you guys want to talk about that we, we're, we're hitting up close to an hour here um, that anything that you want to discuss or mention that I haven't, that we haven't discussed yet. I mean, I've had a great time chatting with you all. Um, this is a lot of fun. 
uh, you've you've given us m me and uh, the other creators who are watching this program um, some really valuable information that I I didn't know, um, especially with the pricing issue. That that's great to hear. Um, but is there anything that you want to mention or, or talk about that we haven't talked about yet? I'll just reinforce that you can charge more if you're okay with selling to the people mostly who are looking for that specific thing. If if you're looking for making impulse sales, then yeah, sell it cheap. But go ahead and charge more if you uh, if your goal is to sell it to people who are looking for that that product. I don't think I don't think there's that people charge enough money in for role playing games in general. Thank you. <laughs> That's great to hear. Um, one thing I. I have you you've seen pay what you want titles correct do you look at those titles if you purchase them you can be honest do you pay for them or do you just download them for free and then see what they are and then pay for them later i consider it a a, a complete preview I, i'll pay zero and if i like it i go back and buy it again That's if i use it I fine. Go back yep. and buy it for the suggested price or or 10 bucks whichever is greater yeah yeah there's a there's a in the industry there's people that say you know people see that as they don't value you you aren't valuing your work when you put it put it to pay what you want you're like you're saying this isn't worth anything for me to charge so why should i pay you for it um but the, there's a the real risk is if i pick it up for zero dollars as an impulse and then never use it then i've effectively bought it for zero dollars but then i got zero dollars of use out of it so i guess that's yeah. fair i think that's fair there's there's certain times when pay what you want is fine. I have a couple products that are pay what you want just because I'm trying to promote my other products. I'm giving away I'm giving products for free to say hey if you want to support me go ahead otherwise take this and, and use it. Um, which I'm fine if people don't pay me for those. Those those I figure I'm not going to make any money off of. And if I do, great. I usually put out the recommended cost, and I think John mentioned it or, or uh, Chad mentioned it earlier. If you really like it, you go back and give more money. If it's a real good product, then. Yeah. Um, I, know, I know some of the anthologies, the collections that are, that are out there, people have, have bought um, a few of the items in the, in the, uh, the collection. And then they've gone back and bought the collection just because they, they said, well, it's, the rest of it's such a good deal still. And I'm going to go ahead and, you know, go ahead and pay for the full price. Um, so yeah, the, 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 there's a multitude of, different types of personalities with, of consumers. And uh, I think you all are some fantastic consumers, the way it sounds. I appreciate you um, um, working with, uh, you know, or purchasing from drive through RPG, RPG, DMs Guild and Kickstarter support. Um, so it's, I've had a great time talking with you all. Like I said, you've shared some great information with me and the others who are, who are watching this stream. Um, and uh, I, I think we're gonna wrap this up. Um, and just give a quick shout out to John Limich, Chad Gallagher, John Pettit. Is there anything that you want to, you guys want to say when we sign off? John, where can we find you on social media again? You can find me at run a game on Twitter or run a game.net for my, we blog. see your cat in the background there. Yeah. She's going nuts. Stealth mode. She's coming to say hi. Chad, where can we find you on, on social media? Uh, I'm on Twitter at real CMG. Uh, and you can also find me at Superior, or at, I'm sorry, at Guild Superior. It's the Superior Adventures Guild. It's a kind of a local sort of uh, gaming group. We're getting into uh, recordings and we're on YouTube and getting into streaming someday as well. Um, so yeah, look for us there. Very cool. And John Pettit. So I'm in, on Twitter at AP only. It's spelled app only. Um, there's a story there that you'll have to ask me about later, but um, that's where I am. Well, again, thank you very much for uh, being on the show. Um, this is the first episode and other episodes. I haven't decided what the, what the content will be on those, but I think I want to talk to um, artists. I want to talk to other writers. I want to talk to Kickstarter producers. I want to talk to larger third-party companies. Um, you know, I, I'm wanting to get get more into the whole, the larger scheme of the RPGs, and not just talk about the individual creators. Um, you know, I want to learn from other people, and and um, so you have been a great episode one. I appreciate it very much. 
and um, I want just wish you all a happy Thanksgiving if you celebrate Thanksgiving and um, safe journeys. You as Thanks. well. You too. All right. Thank you very much. Bye.